channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the Korean glass skin trend, my skincare routine, just some tips and etc. But yeah, I think my videos can get pretty long, so I'll just get started right away. So what is this glass skin that you've been hearing about on social media, Instagram, Twitter, I mean you name it, you've seen it. Glass skin is essentially this Korean skincare trend where your skin is clear, seemingly transparent, and just luminescent, and it's essentially emulating the characteristics of glass. So you want to achieve this by having A, obviously clear skin, B, reducing any acne scars, fine lines, and you just want to create an overall brighter and clearer complexion. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty textbook definition of glass skin. So before I get into my actual skincare routine, which is really simple and somewhat natural, I just want to talk about a couple of tips and just my skin type because it's obvious I think it's better for you guys to know what my skin type is so that you can use whatever products suited for your needs. So my skin type is actually pretty combination sensitive skin. I have the oily t-zones in my nose, above my forehead and underneath my chin. Um, my cheeks are kind of dry. In the summer they're normal but in the winter they tend to lean more in the drier side and here in New York it's mostly winter all the time so I'm going to characterize them as dry. I also have really sensitive skin, so even sometimes sensitive products are quite irritable on my skin. I am very cautious about what I put onto my skin because of that reason. So now I'm going to move on to any like tips or tricks or just essentially things that I think should be addressed when I'm talking about good skin habits. So to start off some of my tips, I think the idea that more is not always better is really important because nowadays I feel like people are shoving down your throat or like there's all these videos about like the whole 10 step skincare trend, 10 step, 12 step skincare routine. I don't think that's always better in everybody's case. For some people that really works and it's really great for them, but for me personally I find that if I start to pile on products and if I start to put on more on my skin it starts to create like this heavy layer and my skin starts to sting, it starts to get irritated, it's just not what's best for my sensitive skin. My skincare routine is really minimal and it works for me, so if you know you have sensitive skin or you find that all these products are not like working for you, then you definitely want to think about minimizing and downsizing your product use. Second one I think is really important too, um, no face makeup. I know you're thinking, you're like crazy, I need, I need the foundation, I need blah 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 to cover all my pimples, I can't go out like this, like, etc. I totally understand, but the whole idea of this is you want to try to minimize your use of foundation or tinted moisturizer or concealer, just anything that's covering your pores because your skin is the largest organ on your body and it's not meant to be covered up and all that foundation is clogging your pores. I actually don't wear any face makeup, like right now I'm completely barefaced. Probably could tell, but yeah. So I actually don't wear any face makeup and I've definitely noticed a significant difference in my skin after not wearing foundation. I first started transitioning from foundation to tinted moisturizer, and even that was a big step for me. And then after the tinted moisturizer, I moved into only putting on concealer. So I only started putting on concealer whenever I had a pimple or breakouts. And now I don't do any of that. I don't even put on concealer anymore even when I start to break out anything because I'd rather just, instead of clogging my pores again and like having it resurface, I would rather just leave it alone, let it take its own time to heal and then just disappear on its own natural time. This second step I think is really crucial if you want in the long run, like long term wise, but it's obviously a very big step for a lot of people and I do understand that. So you definitely want to transition, kind of wean away from foundation and just start to use something lighter and lighter and lighter until eventually you're not using any foundation. The next step is, I feel like a lot of people don't realize this until someone mentions it, is make sure not to touch your face. I found that when I had the most acne, it was like practically cystic acne, I was touching my face frequently, especially because I was breaking out. Because I was breaking out and I had all these pimples, I found myself picking at them and obviously I was just re-adding all the bacteria that's on my fingers onto my face and it was obviously doing more harm than 
good. So you want to make sure and note that you're not touching your face throughout the day. Your fingers and your hands are what are touching everything. Like you're going to the store and touching this and grabbing that. And just all these bacteria and germs are all over your fingers. And now you're putting that on your face. I can't imagine. Of course you're going to break out because of that. So you want to make sure you're not touching your face at all. So I'm going to move into what products, specific products I use. My skincare routine is pretty simple. And I just want to note that I'm going to be looking at my phone every once in a while just because I have a couple of notes down and I want to make sure that you guys get the most information. So for cleanser, I'm using this cleanser that I got from Japan. It's the Sana Soy Milk Moisture Cleansing Wash. And so it's made of soybeans and so it's supposed to replenish like moisture into your skin. It's like this white creamy texture I'll show you guys. It's a squeeze tube and it's this white creamy texture I'll probably put in a clip somewhere and it, it foams really well would I recommend it? Um, this is actually not the cleanser I'm gonna recommend um, I'll talk about that later but I just happened to get this in Japan and obviously I didn't want to let it go to waste so I am using it but it's not bad but I just prefer a different cleanser more and so actually the cleanser that I actually prefer is oh my god I want to butcher it La Roche Posay sorry I took French all the way up until college so the cleanser that I actually recommend is the La Roche Posay Effaclear Effaclair um, clarifying gel yeah it's the La Roche Posay Effaclair purifying gel it's specifically formulated for acne and after using it I've definitely noticed a significant difference in my skin I've noticed the amount of pimples that would resurface on my skin started to dramatically reduce and I felt like it was overall helping my complexion and really keeping my pH levels at a very homostasis kind of status it's a clear kind of gel and it doesn't really foam up all that well but, I mean, for acne skin, I would 100% recommend it. And it's really accessible. You could get it at, like, Target, Ulta, a whole bunch of places. So even though it's a French product, it's easily accessible here in the U.S. So next for my skincare... Take a look at the help section in your Alexa app. So, anyway. <laughs> so the next step in my skincare routine after I've cleansed is I will actually use toner. So the one I have here is the Thayer's Witch Hazel, uh, the rose petal one. It smells like roses too. Don't get just the normal Witch Hazel one, that one smells like actual alcohol, so I would definitely get a scented one if you're going to go for Witch Hazel. Such a natural ingredient that a lot of people use for their skin. I know a lot of Korean celebrities do as well. So Witch Hazel is actually the most natural acne treatment. Witch Hazel is actually a skin healing astringent, which means that it essentially kills bacteria, it helps reduce inflammation, it's a strong antioxidant, and it stops cellular damage that can lead to skin care, prevents signs of aging, and speeds up healing. So after hearing about all these great properties of witch hazel, why would you not go out and buy witch hazel? I think witch hazel is definitely a must if you want glass skin. Now let's say you don't have witch hazel available to you, like you live somewhere in Europe, maybe Korea. I would actually recommend this one. I love this one as well. It's the Bioderma Lone Moisturizing Toning Lotion. I got this in France. Bioderma is a French brand, by the way. I got this in France. But you could also get this in Korea, like at a Watson's or something. And I feel like this toner was perfect for my sensitive skin while cleansing off any dirt or oils just out of my pores. So yeah, this if you're like in Korea and Europe, this if you're in America. I think toner is honestly one of the most important parts of your skincare. So if you only had to choose one product, I would go for toner. Okay, we're like at the last part of my skincare routine. For lotion or moisturizer, I use this Time Revolution White Cure Blank Tone Up Lotion by Misha, which is a Korean brand. So this is not readily available in just like your Sephora or anywhere else. But, I so obviously I got this in Korea. But the key point that you want here is if you want glass skin, you want to get a moisturizer or a lotion that says brightening 
or whitening. Brightening and whitening lotions are supposed to enhance your complexion and just create like a more luminescent skin. Yeah, I've been using this. I really like this as well. I've definitely noticed my skin has gotten a lot whiter. I feel like my complexion has kind of overall evened out. Because this is not readily available, I'll leave I'll do some research and I'll leave some links down below as to some other products that I would recommend. If anything, you want to use you don't have to use this product but you want to make sure you're using something that says brightening or whitening. That's the key words, brightening or whitening. So the last product that I use that I think is actually my secret, secret product is the rose hip seed oil. Rose hip seed oil actually has a lot of benefits. It actually helps to reduce dark spots as well as reduce the appearance of fine lines, acne scars, which is exactly what you want for the properties of glass skin. I love how it's an oil because it's natural and again, like I mentioned, I, I'm a big fan of using natural products on my face. And like I said before, because my skin is combination and it's oily on my T-zone, I actually don't really heavily apply this on my T-zone all that much. I'll just squeeze one drop and that's enough and I'll just squeeze it into the palm of my hand and just kind of warm it up and I'll just pat it in into my cheeks where I have the most acne scars and just like a little bit on my forehead and wherever because I obviously still do break out on my forehead and etc. I'm a big fan of rosehip seed oil. So obviously like anybody else, I still do break out and I'm gonna show you some products that I do use when I start to break out. But yeah, one of my favorites, I actually used this the other day because I'm currently breaking out. This is the Vichy Normaderm 3-in-1 Scrub Cleanser and Mask. So this is a French product and it's not readily available. So I use this product mostly as a mask. It's green. It's kind of like this creamy green color. You just kind of squeeze out and you put it on your face. You paint it on. You let it harden for about 5 minutes and you wash it off. But it also has a lot of particles in it that helps exfoliate your skin as you're washing it off. And the great thing about this is that it has clay and clay is a big ingredient used by a bunch of brands and a bunch of products to help really with deep pore cleansing. So, and I feel like after using this, uh, my skin, I feel like my pores have definitely shrunken and just I feel more refreshed. My skin feels so much more clean and just clean. Yeah, I'll look for similar products down below and I'll link them down below. Another product that I do use that's available at Ulta or just really easily is the Freeman Pomegranate Revealing Peel Off Mask. And this is for all skin types. Yeah, all skin types and it refines and pures. So this one's actually a clear gel that you apply on to your face, paint on again, you let it dry and you just peel it off. So it almost looks like reptile skin. Or like, you know that feeling when you put glue on and you peel it off? It kind of looks like that. It's an 8 antioxidant blend of acai, goji, mango, mango skin, cranberry, nani, pomegranate, and blueberry garden. And it really helps purge dirt and excess oils out of my pores. And price point wise, it's like 4 or $5. So it's, it's a little bit more expensive in Korea. So if you happen to be visiting the US or etc. from wherever, I would definitely pick up a few of these. Peel off masks are great because they adhere to the top layer of dead skin and the dirt and clogged pores. It lifts off all the micro particles of dust and dirt giving you radiant skin immediately. And one last product that I use before when I start breaking out is the One Step Pimple Clear Pad by Coserex. This is essentially pre-moistened pads, I'll show you later, in this tube. I don't know how many there are. This is a Korean brand, I should mention. So this. Pimple pad is designed to wipe away excess dirt, oil, and purify clogged pores with exfoliating pre-moistened pads. It has tea tree oil, which is great for killing bacteria, so it smells heavily of tea tree oil, which for those of you who don't know, kind of smells like, I feel like it smells like clementines mixed with peppermint. But it's not as pleasing as you would think it is. It's kind of an un... Yeah, undesirable scent, but it's not terrible. I just don't like prefer it. So how you use this is after you've done washed your face, you're going to use this instead of a toner and you're just going to take one pad and just 
essentially clean your face with it. It's actually two-sided, so one side has like ridges in it, and the ridges is supposed to kind of exfoliate your skin while clear off any residue. And then the other side is actually smooth, so that side is used to, so just to kind of clear away and smooth out any last minute like dirt or oil and just kind of moisten your face and create for a more clear complexion. Yeah, I really like this product. I try to use it sparingly. I only try to use it when I have when I start to break out like crazy like right now. So, well, that was it for my skincare routine. As you can see, it was really simple. Like I like to keep it minimal as possible. So, yeah, if you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, blah blah blah, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.